a bite. That was my whole presentation. <laughs> and I smoked. So we said, no, no, we're not buying anything, magazines, lots, whatever. And I, said, <laughs> and, and I said, well, here, take my name and phone number. So I pulled out my matches and put down my name and phone number and gave it to him. And folks, now came the biggest challenge of my entire married life. I had to go home. So I walked in the door and put my arms around my bride and said, we're in real estate, babe. And uh, she said, oh, good, let's go see your first deal. And I said, mm -hmm. I can handle this. She said, no, you can't. No, no, I want to go see your first deal, at least your first deal. No, nah, I can't, no. Well, she won. And uh, we're, we're heading down to Kensington. She knew we weren't heading to, you know, Society Hill someplace. So we pulled up in front of my lot. And uh, she says, uh, now she's like right here in the but this spring is coming up. So she says, what'd you buy? I don't see anything here. I said, no, I bought this lot. She said, you bought an empty lot in Kensington? We need to talk, Bill. So we drove around and we talked. Folks, men folks know what they just talked to like. So, uh, she said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to take names and draw numbers of a whole bunch of other people and see if I can sell this thing. So the next couple of days, I was on the phone. I was getting hung up on Curse that. What are you crazy? I wouldn't buy an empty lot in Kensington. I get a telephone call from the father of the kid here. And he said, you know, I, I, I knew about that tax sale and I forgot completely about it. I wanted that lot. Do you want to sell that to me? I said, you bet. And I'll be right down. I figured I blew my negotiating stance you know, at that point. <laughs> went down there 300 miles an hour. Uh, went up and introduced myself. The guy's name is Joe. And I said, uh, I remember something about negotiating. Why didn't name the price first loses? You've heard that before. So I said, uh, Joe, how much will you give me for the lot? And he says, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, how much would you take? And I said, uh, well, what do you think it's worth? And he said, well, what do you think it's worth? And I quickly figured out he went to the same classes of negotiation <laughs> that I did. So at that point, he said, you know, I wasn't going to pay more than a couple thousand bucks for it. So I took a deep breath. I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear about that because I'm going to be real straight with you, Joe. I paid $4,000 for that lot. I got a deposit on it. And I'm going to sell it. And I whipped this list out. There's somebody on this list for $6,000. i am not greedy. And he looked at the list, and at the top of the list was Zimmerman heating and cooling. I don't know what those two were going on between them, but he turned as red as a beet, and I could have swore smoke was coming out of his ears, and he started having some Mr. you know, adjectives in front of Mr. Zimmerman's name. And you know, and he said six thousand dollars. I said, Yep. And as I started to walk out, you know, I was like, okay, I knew I had that. And uh, he says, Okay, do you need a deposit? Yep. 500 bucks cash. We got it. So I don't know if I have that much. Got a couple hundred to check for three. And I said, okay. And so he gave me that. And I said, uh, I looked at my watch and I said, uh, well, the courthouse is closed. I guess we can't settle it today. So why don't we settle it Monday? I'll meet you down in front of St. Pete's at 13th and Market at uh, 9 o'clock. And we'll go over to Sheriff's office and I will sign you over that particular lot. We'll complete the transaction then. So I went and got down to St. Pete's at quarter to nine, went into the church and prayed real hard. And uh, he showed up at nine o'clock. We walked over to Sheriff's office and uh, I made myself a neat little 2,000 bucks and said, Becker, if you can foul up this bed, your first deal and make $2,000 in a little over 10 days, you're in the right business. And that was my first deal. Um, been telling that for a long, long time. And there it is, right there. Okay, it's still there. It hasn't changed. By the way, that house that I had been in that I thought I bought is all boarded up now. Okay, so I don't know what. So, anyhow, we're going to show you tonight and about ten days from now why real estate is the ideal investment. It's going to get you income. It's going to get you something called depreciation now. Some people in here that know what that is, and every time I meet with my accountant, he tells me what it is. 
But, you know, about 15 minutes later, I forget what he said about depreciation. All I know is it's you get to keep more in your hip national bank at the end of the year. So fine, Ken, then whatever you say is good. Equity, oh, that's one of my favorite words. Equity, building equity. There's some people here I said I heard tonight that are upside down in equity. That's the reverse equity. Appreciation. Now we experienced appreciation since 2003, haven't we? It shot up like that, and then what happened? It reached the top and it went down. This is the best market to be involved in real estate investing. I've got to tell you this much: that four years ago, this room was packed. These folks back there know that. There were people out in the hallway, and they were sticking their heads in. You couldn't breathe in here. Not today. But this is when they should be here, is today. You folks are smart. You're the smart ones. Because now's the time to invest in real estate. Leverage. That's how you're going to do it. Using other people's money and our strategy. Who here would like to make an extra three to five thousand dollars a month for hardly doing anything? Yeah. You want to make more? Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? Is that why you're not putting up your hand? More? <laughs> That's the first time they smile all night. That's great. Love it. Okay. You mentioned money, people smile. You have to say to yourself, what is your why? You know, why are you here? Not because somebody told you to come. What is what is your true why? You want to have financial independence. But what is your deep seated why? You know, I said that to Vin when he was here a while ago. Oh. And Joanna, what is your why? Financial freedom. To do what? To do whatever you want. Whatever you want, whenever you want. How about you, Andre? Your why? The why is that? Just the challenge. Is, um... You don't want the money? The Who money. wants his money? He just wants the challenge. The, the money will come. Yes, that's right. The money will come. That's right. And you got a dedication and you enjoy it. And you your passion. Follow your passion. passion. Absolutely. The money going. It's right on he's right on the money. Follow your dreams to your success. What are your dreams? Okay. That's what and but you gotta say, okay, what is my why? You know, some people say, well, I want to travel. I want to go on vacation, I want to help people. That's the deep, you have to have a purpose. You lose your purpose, you're done. You might as well stick you in the ground, right? So you need that purpose, you need that passion. How many people here are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Nobody? Oh, just a few people, okay? Right. But you know, there ain't, there ain't no free lunch, is there? You have to give up something to make it happen. That's the deep. And your most valuable resource is what? Time, because time is more valuable than money. You can always go out and make more money, folks, but you can't make more time. Every day, every minute is precious, like a diamond. You got to get rid of doubt, pride, fear, and then, <laughs> and then, what do you think you got to do once you've gotten rid of this? You got to take action, and you've got to do it now. What do I mean by 